This is Dolores Catherino, and I'd like to talk to you today about working with the prototype Lumitone keyboard. If any of you were at NAMM, this was one of the two prototypes that they had on display. I received this instrument from Toronto earlier in April. It has totally transformed the way that I think about polychromatic music because I hadn't realized the assumptions that were in play with all of the keyboards I'd worked with before the Lumitone. This is the first keyboard that I've ever worked with that doesn't have some kind of chromatic overlay. That would be the equivalent of black keys or black key regions on the instrument. It really made me start to think about if it is possible to simplify the polychromatic system by just focusing on the white keys of the piano and using pitch color to distinguish everything so that you don't even need flats, sharps, black keys. You don't need accidentals. You don't need key signatures. Just imagine a piano and all the black keys are gone. It's a polychromatic system where instead of thinking about accidentals and pitch modifier symbols like a sharp or a flat, you're just thinking, take any note, say C, and you extend flat word as you go C yellow, C orange, C red. And then if you want to take that C pitch and extend it sharpward, then you're going C green, C cyan, C blue, C violet. And the same thing starts over again with D. And in some ways, this really simplifies the way that you could approach very large pitch temperaments. I always try to strive for getting the maximum pitch resolution I can. The way that I have it programmed out for these examples is 55 equal divisions of the octave or 55 notes per octave. All along this journey, every composition or every part of this process kind of reveals new things to think about that I had never even considered. And one was that when I thought about chromatic music, I thought of it as black and white pitches, just like the way that the keys are on a piano. Working with the Lumitone, what I discovered was black and white are used in the chromatic system, not as pitch colors. They're used to distinguish the duration of a pitch. So you use black and white patterns to tell whether you have a whole note or a half note or a quarter note. What I found was that I couldn't notate the pitch color of white in standard notation because white and black are being used to distinguish note durations. And another problem is that the background of sheet music is white. And in order to distinguish the pitch color of white, I had to find kind of an off-white or grayish color to notate the white pitches on the Lumitone controller. And really, it's just a conceptual bridge to try to simplify it in one way where you take all the black keys off of a piano, and then instead, you're adding pitch colors above and below all of those white keys on the piano. Looking at the color layout of the Lumitone keyboard, you can see that there's a central white row. And I think of this as the white notes on the piano and the home row, and you see that it ascends from red, orange, yellow, white, green, cyan, blue, and violet. Every key looks like every other key on the Lumitone. And because of this, I had to designate one note for a visual cue. In order for me to have a sense of where my hands are on the keyboard, I designated the note A with a special color and you see this as a vertical column, which stands out from the rest of the color pattern of the keyboard. And this is really just to tell my eyes and hands where the note A is on the keyboard over the various octaves.
I usually start my practice session by listening to all of these pitch colors and appreciating them by their sound and also by how it feels to play them as well as how they look on the keyboard. And the Lumitone really makes this synesthetic connection a lot easier because you do see the note colors and how they light up as you're playing the notes. So you're really starting to conceptualize the sound with what you're seeing visually and how it feels when you play it. I think this is a big breakthrough in learning music because the more senses that you can integrate into your practice and your musical experience, your technique, the deeper the level of the experience. In this configuration, you can hear how the interval of a third changes as you go sharpward and flatward. And pretty soon you start to distinguish each of these pitches as a pitch in its own sense and not as being a little bit off of a traditional minor third or major third. You hear them as unique intervals, distinct intervals that have their own pull and tension within a chord. The next thing I work on is developing scale technique. There are two ways that I practice scales on the Lumitone. And the first way is like the piano, left to right. So what I will do is first approach it by using a very cognitive, rational process where I am playing a note, looking at where it's located on the keyboard and saying in either my mind or speaking out loud what the note is that I'm playing. So in this way, you really get a conceptual imprint of what note you're playing at each moment in time, where it's located on the keyboard. It's a very intense portion of your practice session, and that's why I usually do it first. So I'll start by finding C, and then the next key, go to D, E, G, A, B, C, and then back down. And as I said, it's really uh, very mentally fatiguing to, to play this way because you're really focusing your mind more than technique. You're just trying to say, which note am I playing right at this moment in time? 
Where is it located on the keyboard? How does it feel within the context of a scale or an interval pattern? The next way that I approach scales comes more from guitar technique in terms of thinking about geometrical shapes. So now I'm not thinking about the notes at all. I'm thinking about how the scale lays out on the instrument. What are the shapes that I'm playing with my hands and how do they look? As you see, with a C major scale, the first three notes create an ascending angle. And then the next four notes create a second ascending angle. And so really, you just need those two anchor points of C and F, and then you have that shape of the C major scale. This is more about motor memory and how a scale feels. So this is really where you can start to work on your speed of technique. In addition to practicing scales the way you would on a piano from left to right, you can also practice them from front to back. I usually position my keyboards on an incline so that they are an ascending angle as they move away from me. It just feels more comfortable, technically speaking. In this sense, what you get is more of a sense of micro pitch or what I would call pitch color. And so the first thing we would do, let's start with the key of A. And just like before, we're going to go through the very cognitive process where you're paying attention to each note that you are playing. And notice, because this is based on a modal scale of A through G, we're not using accidentals anymore. After we finish with this focus of understanding what the notes are that we're playing, we go to the second step, which is paying attention to the shape of the scale. And you'll see that the A major scale has a distinct shape and shape feel to it. Now what we'll do is we'll work on the scale and we will ascend using the pitch colors. The Lumitone keyboard comes with its own editor, and this allows you to set up for each key the MIDI note number, the channel number, and a color assignment. What I also use is Aaron Hunt's Universal Tuning Editor, the UTE, and you can find that at HPI Instruments. And this is wonderful because it has set up some presets for different types of microtonal keyboards. He created one for the Lumitone, and the Universal Tuning Editor allows you to create any kind of tuning layout. The Lumitone Editor is just for those MIDI assignments and the color assignments. But at some point, you want to set up what your micro pitch layout for the instrument could be. It's very, very intuitive, very easy to assign colors and different types of methods for dividing up an octave or whatever region that you determine for a repetition. I pretty much use Cubase all the time. Cubase is an older and very mature MIDI editor and sequencer and full digital audio workstation at this point, but really it started as a MIDI sequencer. And so for doing these kind of things where... I want to assign one track with multiple channels. It just seems to be much easier than to go through Logic Pro. Logic has something called a MIDI environment, and the user interface really looks like something from the 1990s. And it's one of those things where you think about how much time that you could invest in trying to learn how to set up your controllers and your software. It's really one of those situations where the amount of time it would take to elegantly program the MIDI environment 
to do the type of things that you would like to do uh, would take a lot of time away from your music, your composition, uh, your technical practice. And so for each person, you kind of determine where that balance is for you of really optimizing a DAW to do amazing things or getting by with a stable, basic configuration. It keeps coming back to the same question of how we choose to allocate our creative time. And in some senses, the troubleshooting and the technical end, at least for me, puts me in a different mindset than uh, when I'm practicing composition. We all have unique talents, and I'm really looking forward to all of the great music that can be created through collaboration in the future. Well, that wraps it up for my overview of the Lumitone keyboard. This fantastic prototype will hopefully be in production sometime later this year. And as always, keep creative, keep on practicing, and we'll catch you next time.